a Minneapolis man's last words. And they breathe. Reignites a conversation about race, police brutality, and social injustice. Black lives matter. George Floyd's life ended in eight minutes and 46 seconds, pinned under the knee of a police officer. He's not the first African-American whose death in police custody sparked protests. But it came during a health crisis, when more people are home watching and listening. And the call for change is so much more urgent right now. We're not saying our lives are superior. We're saying that we should be treated equal. Tonight, we're shining a light on race relations here in Florida. From the Big Bend. And Tampa Bay. Down the Gulf Coast. And across South Florida. A statewide look at the younger generation now leading the movement for racial justice. It was just exciting to see them take over where we have stopped and then to keep on going. The race to register minority voters for an election that could open the doors to real change. And I think blacks, particularly in this next election, have an opportunity to really move the needle on the issues that we've been trying to address for hundreds of years. Barriers that black men and women continue to face in their everyday lives. I've been in meetings and conferences, small conferences, where there's not many people that look like me. And, and, and that's unfortunate. And kids having very grown up conversations with their parents. I'm a kid that loves to give back to his community. I'm not some dug off of the street. And I'm just a kid that wants to improve his life and live better. In the midst of uncomfortable conversations, there's a lot of anger, frustration, and yes, hope. Hope for healing, hope for change. Hope that our state can rise above. Good evening, I'm Holly Davis with WPTV News Channel 5 in West Palm Beach. This is race relations shining a light across Florida. For the next hour, we're uniting voices from each of our Scripps markets in the state. I'm Shari Armstrong with WFTX Fox 4 in Cape Coral. Two short months ago, George Floyd's name became known around the world, and his death represents today's desperate call for justice and change. In Tallahassee at WTXL ABC 27, I'm Ava Van Valen. We have been watching the movement in each of our communities, the sadness, anger, and frustration that many of you have felt, and it's all happening during a trying time in this country. The coronavirus pandemic, an economic crisis, and the uncertainty of what is to come. I'm Dia Riley from ABC Action News in Tampa. Tonight, we're coming together to shine a light on race relations in Florida. The movement, the divide, and the action being taken to make our state a place for all people. Black Lives Matter, three words that now represent a global movement for racial justice. But here in Florida, those on the front lines of the fight for racial equality and equity say the term Black Lives Matter is more than one movement. Sabira Rayford has their story. It's a message that spans decades. Now civil rights leaders of our past are passing the torch to a new generation. This monument is the story of the change that we want to come. 87 years old. But our success depends upon the movement. Edith Bush won't stop walking towards justice. Black Lives Matter. Why are you still so passionate at 80 something years old? Well, it is because in, uh, because in the, I see the young people out there fighting for the same thing that we fought for over 20 years ago. In the early spring of 1964, local Negroes began civil rights demonstrations with white and Negro sympathizers from the North participating. Edith was on the front lines in Florida fighting for racial equality. Our organization won recognition from the state of Florida for our work in the civil rights movement. From John Lewis to Al Sharpton or Martin Luther King Jr. III, Edith's West Palm Beach home documents her dedication. So when people walk in this door, I want them to see what we've been through. 52 years later, a new movement is mirroring the past. It was just exciting to see them take over where we have stopped and then to keep on going. And 
19 years old. Yeah. How do you find people react to you? Some people say I'm too young to know what I'm talking about. But I mean, when you see it, it's on social media. America watched George Floyd die for eight minutes and 46 seconds. Widmeyer Pierre is the co-founder of the reformers movement. We educate people uh, on why it's important to vote and try to build the bridge between um, police departments and communities. His group has organized dozens of Black Lives Matter protests throughout South Florida. We're not saying our lives are superior. We're saying that we should be treated equal. No police! police. No no police. People have been protesting a mistreatment of black people and saying in so many words that black lives matter for years. Executive director of the Spady Cultural Heritage Museum in Delray Beach, Charlene Farrington says, similar to the murder of Emmett Till in the 50s, the killing of George Floyd reignited the push for racial justice. The old African saying, an injury to one is an injury to all. I think what's happening is young people are starting to understand that. And so they are leaving the small issues aside and now starting to advocate for the larger issues, which is why our civil rights movements that are going on today are starting now to look like they used to look in the 50s and 60s. I'm proud. At the Box Art Gallery in Palm Beach County, Widmeyer is happy these pictures paint one difference. Everybody coming together in uh, unity, black, white, Hispanic, Republican, Democrat. We've had Republicans march with us. So it's like um, party aside, people first. That's what, it, that's what it's about. For these activists, Black Lives Matter is a movement that transcends decades. Love, love can overcome hate. Light can overcome darkness. Yeah. And judge a person not by the color of the skin, but the content of their character. Come on. <laughs> Reporting in South Florida, <laughs> I'm Sabir Rayford. Salt and pepper, peanut butter and jelly, beaches and sand. These are all things that our minds link together without us even thinking about it. As Brian Jackson reports, that's also how we form implicit biases, whether we want them or not. Living in society, having a brain. That's it. If you live in society and have a brain, you're going to have implicit bias. Today you will be challenged, okay, but in a good, loving way. Dr. Bryant T. Marks is a professor at Morehouse College and the founding director of the National Institute on Race and Equity. In its essence, implicit bias is a stereotype uh, that is an association of a group with a trait that can affect how we think feel and behave at a subconscious level. But at the end of the day, uh, as we live life, we're overexposed to certain groups and certain traits and certain groups in certain roles. And upon repeated exposure, our mind locks in that association automatically. And once that happens, the seed for implicit bias is planted. You've worked with thousands of law enforcement officers over the course of your career. How would you say that implicit biases kind of impact their ability to protect and serve? Most officers in our experience want to be fair. They want to be impartial. We all have biases just by being human, right? It's by living in society and having a brain. Some of us go into uh, journalism. Some of us go into uh, being bus drivers or, and some go into policing. Before any of those occupations occurred, the common factor was their humanity. So just being human in this society allowed us to form certain biases. If I go into policing, my bias is expressed in a particular way. The thing that's so sensitive about policing is they have the right to take somebody's life if they deem it necessary. So when their bias plays out, somebody can die. If an accountant bias plays out, a number may be off, a bus driver, somebody might get left at the stop, but nobody's dead. So for police officers, even though they're human, like everybody else, they chose a profession that is special, unlike everybody else's. Black Lives Matter is painted on city streets all over the country. Those symbolic acts have led to conversations that maybe weren't being held before. However, listen to the responses Dr. Marks gets when he's training a group and poses the question, what comes to mind when Americans think of African-American males? Dangerous, thug, criminal, rapper, athlete. Those are our top five across the country. Not only police, everybody. Teachers, doctors, nurses, and black males themselves. Everybody gets those answers. We all we got, we all we need. Imagine walking through life with this, these words, as your personal brand. You walk into the office building for the interview, this walks in with you. You walk down the street past a police officer, this walks with you. No matter your race or gender, there's one easy way to find out what role implicit bias plays in your life. 
talk to somebody who, who knows you really, really well, a loved one. I'm going to give you a pass for you to tell me what biases you think I have. And then you listen. Here's the deal. Sometimes other people will see our biases before we do. Dr. Mark suggests putting your bias to the test with this. The results, he says, could surprise you. Work is not to figure out, do you have any implicit bias? You're human, you do. Just be grown and accepted, okay? Your work is to figure out which specific biases you have, what is the magnitude, and are they systematically advantaging or disadvantaging anybody else? I can have a bias on a particular group, right? But if I'm at work, I have a certain way that I hire people, promote people, evaluate them, that's objective and standardized. So I still have my biases, but my practice is such that my biases do not affect outcomes. That's the work you want to do. In Tallahassee, I'm Brian Jackson. Still to come, racial injustice within Florida's prison system. How lawmakers on both sides of the aisle are working to correct the disparities. And a deeper look into the racial divide in our communities, as well as our police departments. Two police chiefs explain why not enough has changed in recent years.